Hello, Internet. Big Nick on the drum here. Wanted to share a little voiceover advice. When I was starting out with doing recording, the biggest hurdle for me to get over was how do I make my recording sound professional, like what they use in the big studios? In theory, we had everything that we needed on the computer, something that we didn't have before. But they've taken it one step further, and I'm going to show you some tools that actually bring the sound of the studio right into your DAW and more than likely these are included with your DAW at no extra cost. So I'm using Studio One. I am using Studio One version 4. Version 5 is out now and I'm almost positive that this same fat channel plugin is available with the same classic compressors and classic EQ expansions. So you'll want to get those expansions because you'll see here I'm not using the default compressor. That looks like this. You can use this default compressor but what we're really going for is the sound of this FET comp. Now this is based on a UA1176. This is one of the key tools that you'll see in any world-class studio even in any of the better project studios available in your city. The other key here is we're going to use this Pull Tech EQ. This is another classic piece of gear. Now, this is what's really crucial. The Pull Tech has a very characteristic sound that differs from your standard multi band EQ. In fact, we're going to undo that because we definitely need to go back. Out to the vintage, to the passive. So, I'm going to play the finished product. I'm going to compare it AB with the raw sound. And then I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to get this sound. It's actually very straightforward. Even if you're not familiar with how to use a compressor or how this very funky old school EQ works, you're going to know by the end of this video. Let's go ahead and take a listen. In a hurry to get somewhere, the Wavefront will take you there and back again. The latest model from Wavefront Motors brings you a slick new design and an abundance of trailblazing features that harness the latest technological breakthroughs to deliver you from point A to B in turbo speed. Okay, it's not 100% there, but when you compare it to the raw audio from the microphone, in a hurry to get somewhere, the Wavefront will take you there and back again. The latest model from Wavefront Motors brings you a... It's a lot closer once you turn the magic back slick on. ...new design and an abundance of trailblazing features that harness the latest technological breakthroughs to deliver you from point A to B in turbo speed. Now, it's definitely got some problems with some peas popping. There's some bad breath control going on that's me I also have the fans on in this room uh, the computer is sitting right here there's 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 no sound treatment in this room there's a hundred different things that could be done to make this sound better but we're always asking what's the right EQ what's the right compression because even once you get all these other things in order it's gonna be these settings that make a big difference in the sound as I just demonstrated they're nothing to sneeze at so like I said I'm using studio one version 4 the this is the fat channel plugin this is here by default this narration that you're hearing is coming through my webcam just so it's real clear between what I'm narrating and what we're working with on the mic this microphone is a Rode NT1A Plugged into a PreSonus Studio 4C USB audio interface. Very simple stuff. Very affordable. We're talking a $200 mic, $80 interface, I believe. No external preamp or anything like that. Now, if you had an external mic preamp, it would probably take this the quality of this sound even further. But the real problems with this audio have to do with the external noise, 
the poor treatment in the room, me being out of practice. So once you get those things in order, here's what you can do on the production side to get it across the finish line. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this fat channel off. In fact, let's just go ahead and remove it. Now you'll see that I also have the Pro EQ here. That is a secondary equalizer, the standard equalizer that I'm using to carve out some of the bad frequencies. I'm gonna explain why there's two different EQs here. There's, first there's a color EQ, that's what we're getting from the fat channel. Now, now hold on, let's bring it back up here. The fat channel here, this compressor and this EQ, these are what are going to give the sound its color. Then the secondary EQ, this is where we do the correction. So, we're making sure to keep our Q very small, smallish. Remember, we always boost wide, cut narrow. And for correction stuff, you want to avoid boosting as much as you can. The boost that we're adding to the signal is already happening on this EQ. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and get this Pultec EQ going. Now we call it a Pultec, even though it doesn't say Pultec anywhere. That's because it's actually a copyright name. This is a classic piece of studio gear, and it's been replicated hundreds of times. But all of it is in pursuit of either duplicating or improving the classic sound. So the major magic here happens in this low frequency section. So here we can select a center frequency. We're gonna crank it up to 100. That's about as low as the male voice is gonna go. Uh, even for female voices, this 100 band is right in the sweet spot for adding body to the human voice. And the classic trick with these, it's been used for bass drums, bass guitars, bass synths, anything where you need it to have mo bass. We're going to start by attenuating it anywhere from three to six decibels. I found that I actually didn't need that much, so we'll go 3.25. You're going to attenuate it. Attenuate means cut. We're going to attenuate it and boost at the same level. Now, let's start with it off. This battery-powered vehicle runs entirely on renewable energy, so it's an environmentally sustainable Can you hear the difference? way of getting around. The wave front also comes equipped with cutting-edge motion. It adds a huge breadth to the bass, and it adds a lot of bass response without changing the color of your voice. Um, so this is a classic music production trick, but guarantee... You're already hearing the difference between I recorded this at home on my laptop and maybe I recorded it in a high-end studio by using some of these classic high-end studio tropes. This is definitely a trope of high-end studio production that'll, in, that'll create the perception of high-value production in your work. So that's what's so important about these plugins here. Now that we have emulations of the real studio tools, we don't have to find another way of replicating that sound. Because I'll tell you, the first thing any amateur producer wants to do to add more body to a sound, they come into a standard multiband EQ like this and they grab, not the cut, we're not trying to cut it, we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and take the green one here. They come down the low range and they start just pumping it, just pumping it. And when you do that, you are mangling. You are just mangling that signal because you might be adding even just 6 dB of gain. It doesn't look like that much on the graph, does it? That's actually quite a lot. So anything that's... This kind of EQ is only going to boost or cut what is already there. So if there's no bass in that signal to begin with, you're just trying to bring up oxygen, just air, nothing. And then what little bits of bass noise 
are in that signal are suddenly going to jump out at you. And we don't want that. That's, that's more work for the compressor to do that's going to make it even more aggressive sounding without necessarily improving it. So let's just go ahead and put him back at his home here. We're going to go ahead and leave these. These are some cuts that I made while I was uh, working on this earlier because I recognized that there were some bad frequencies there that I needed to take out. So like I said, this is the correction stage. Let's go back to our color stage here. So the other thing that we're going to need to do is we want to bring out the air and articulation in the voice. So here we can do a nice sizable high boost. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Motion sensor technology. So every moving object on and off road. And you can hear your radar. You can actually crank that up a lot. It's also the state of the art interior design. And sort of the magic of this Pultec EQ is that it can it can add air and it can add body without changing the color or the the actual shape of the signal. So now another important thing on this low frequency side, your boost, your attenuate, those are both part of the same circuit. All three of these knobs work together. This bandwidth knob, it'll affect everything going on here. But basically, it's it acts like a Q knob. So if you if you find that you're getting too broad of a bass boost, you can crank this bandwidth down, and it'll thin it out just a little bit. So let's go ahead and try that. With slick new design and an abundance of trailblazing features that harness the latest technological breakthroughs. To deliver you from barely perceptible it's barely perceptible but anyway what i was getting at on the high frequency side things are different the boost knob is attached to this high frequency knob the attenuate knob is attached to the attenuation select so you have a low frequency boost and cut then you have high frequency boost which is these two knobs high frequency cut these two knobs. So for this application, I'm gonna set this down to 10 kilohertz. Because really, there's nothing going on in your voice, at least for a traditional read, that's actually going much above 10K. And then we can use this knob to adjust the, the brightness of the signal. In turbo speed. This battery-powered vehicle runs entirely on... See, now it's very dull so sounding. it's an environmentally sustainable way of getting around. It's the probably about there. also good. comes equipped with cutting-edge motion sensor technology. So every moving object on and off-road is on your radar at all times. Here's okay. So, we got the EQ. And this is where about 80% of the magic is happening in this trick. So the other side of this is we need we want to add some compression because if we look here, you know, our waveform is quite dancey. And if we play back Mars here, the latest technological breakthroughs. See, we're peaking just below nine, it sometimes just speed. above nine. This bad. It's it's not very well controlled. So we're going to use the compressor to grab that signal and and just keep it under control. Now here's where I'm gonna teach you a little bit how a compressor works. So you might be used to working with this style of graph compressor. You change the threshold, it's gonna change the output slope. You have a key filter on it, and the attack and release. Now I know from me personally, it was many, 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 many years longer than it should have been to learn what these knobs do. But I think really it's easier and you're gonna get more of the characteristic sound that we want if we load up this FET comp, which as I said earlier, this is a model of the UA1176, which was really the, the very first of these kind of fast attack, ultra accurate compressors. This started in the late 60s and very much defined the sound of 70s high fidelity recording. Um, 
these are just a gem and you're going to find them in any studio that takes itself seriously it won't necessarily be a ua 1176 since they're incredibly expensive and sought after but it will be one of its thousands of clones so and this works a little different instead of setting a threshold you see that there's an input and an output and by default our input is about negative 43 so this is Every neutral vehicle runs entirely on renewable energy let's go ahead so and take our output down take it down about 12 db boost this up motion sensor technology so every moving object on and off road there and you can hear the compression come in and you can all. see the needles start to move there's also the state-of-the-art interior design Cons now for what we're doing i want the fastest attack and the fastest release we might end up adjusting that release down but we're also we're going to go with the highest ratio so our goal here normally if you use this for music you might go with slower attack and release lower ratios because you want some of the danciness to stay in the sound especially with something like a drum kit you might want that release to be a lot more casual you want to hear the change in compression over time this, we want it super quick because we don't want to be able to hear it. We just want as much as possible within good taste to sort of brick wall the signal. So by doing that, the attack means that the compressor is going to turn on instantly, virtually instantly. When it hears something go outside the range, it's going to immediately jump in and grab it. And the release determines how fast it lets go of that control so by having it release just as fast ideally we're just bringing down the loud peaks and then letting the softer parts of the signal stay at their normal volume and by having the highest ratio we know that when we when we adjust that peak we're really adjusting that peak you can always go back in and experiment with the lower ratios, but I'm telling you, um, let's just compare it with, here's a compressor that I loaded up that's a lot more of like a traditional broadcast compressor. This is going to be more familiar to the kind of sounds, you know, that you're used to hearing on like local radio. For maximum comfort, no more getting left behind. Drive fast. It's super aggressive. Front. And we got the same thing. Oh, this it... year. Learn more about our new initiative to make environmentally conscious driving available to the world on wavefrontmotors.com. Now you can really hear that local radio sound, can't you? Once I brought that release down and it started letting the quiet parts come up as well as bringing down the loud parts, you start to really hear it. So I don't like that. I like it to be just a little classier. So we're going to go with this. Now, there's always a, the eternal question of which, come, which comes first, the EQ or the compressor. If you put the EQ first, then whatever changes the EQ makes, the compressor is going to control those changes. If you put the compressor first, the EQ is going to exaggerate whatever changes the compressor makes. It's really just a matter of listening. But if you find, if in general you find that the P's are too plosive, I can't really tell you that one or the other is going to be better. So just work on not popping your P's. Go back and edit. Uh, I mean, there really isn't a, well, there probably is by now, some plugin that actually magically erases your P plosives. But we're talking about stock plugins here. We're not, we're not downloading skill here, okay? So, let's go back and hear final result. In a hurry to get somewhere, the Wavefront will take you there and back again. The latest model from Wavefront Motors brings you a slick new design and an abundance of trailblazing features that harness the latest technological breakthroughs to deliver you from point A to B in turbo speed. Uh, this so battery we're clipping a little bit. runs entirely on renewable energy, so it's an environmentally sustainable Let's way of bring that down. 
And the wave you know, front also comes equipped with. You're not feeling confident about it. You can always throw so a limiter on, which object on and off. they're real nice to include the limiter at the end of this chain. And that's another place if if you decide like oh, we really do want that aggressive sound. Go ahead and throw the limiter on. The Wavefront will take you there and back again. The latest model from Wavefront Motors brings you a slick new design and an abundance of trailblazing features that harness the latest technological breakthroughs to deliver you from point A to B in turbo speed. This battery-powered vehicle runs entirely on renewable energy, so it's an environmentally sustainable way of getting around. The Wavefront also comes equipped with... Now, if I were an audio producer, an in-house guy, and I was staking my reputation on the quality of this audio, I'd still have a lot of work to do. A lot of editing, a lot of fine-tuning. You might say that technically adding this correction EQ was sort of a, a step too far for what I'm trying to accomplish here. Let me just play the difference there, too. In a hurry to get somewhere, the Wavefront will take you there and back again. You can hear it's got that boxiness. From Wavefront Motors brings you a slick new design and an abundance of trailblazing features that harness the latest technological breakthroughs to deliver you from point A to B in turbo speed. So just adding a little bit of cut there where I find the boxy frequencies and I want to get rid of them. So... Like I was saying, if I were an in-house production guy and my the quality of the audio was attached to my reputation, there would be a lot more work to do. But as far as submitting things on Voices.com or producing for a personal YouTube channel, this is a quick, easy solution that will immediately set you ahead of the guy who's uh, <clears throat> recording audio off of his webcam. Not that I would ever be that guy. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want. You know how to YouTube. I don't need to tell you this stuff. But do it. Do it. Do it.